the most versatile 6'9 player in the college game today. Coupled with fellow countryman Christian Velp, they form a pair of Teuton Terrors. Duke proved time and again this season. Ask North Carolina that this team can win outside the library. Fueled by high-octane guard Johnny Dawkins, who seems to be everywhere at once. Mike Krzyzewski's team is young, talented, and full of spirit. Another example, Mark Allery, like Dawkins, just a sophomore. CBS Sports winds up its second-round coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship from Pullman, Washington. The site, Friel Court, on the campus of Washington State University. The matchup, the Duke Blue Devils of the ACC against the Washington Huskies of the Pac-10. Second round tournament game is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. Visa, cards and travelers checks. You can do it. We'd like to help. And by IBM. Welcome back to Frio Court in Pullman, Washington. Interesting matchup in this one as the Duke Blue Devils carrying the banner of the ACC and trying to make it a complete sweep this weekend for the Atlantic Coast Conference. And the Washington Huskies, one of just two teams left west of the Rockies. With me is Larry Conley. And we have a case here, I guess, of the, the big guys against the quick guys. It really is, Frank. You've got a basketball team like Duke who's very, very quick. If there's an advantage that they have, it's in the backcourt. They've got two very quick guards. Amaker and Dawkins are extremely quick. On the inside for Washington, their big front line is really going to be the plus for them here. Also, two very young basketball teams. They really are. They've got eight freshmen and sophomores in the starting lineup. That's incredible for an NCAA tournament team for both of them. And an interesting contrast to the coaching matchup today. You've got uh, one veteran coach, one very young coach, but both coaches won honors at their conferences this season. They did. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski was the ACC Coach of the Year, and in this conference, Marv Harsman was the Pac-10 Conference Coach of the Year. That's a, quite a compliment. One is the older guy, the experienced man, and you got the young guy just getting started. So Duke out of the tough ACC going against the Washington Huskies, the co-champions of the Pac-10. Back with the introduction of the starting lineups in just a moment. Welcome back to Pullman, Washington. The Washington Huskies and the Duke Blue Devils on the court going through their last-minute warm-ups. Washington 23-6 and six coming into this game and the Duke Blue Devils 24-9 and nine in the very tough ACC. And Larry Conley, been quite a weekend for the Atlantic Coast Conference. It really has. They've gone four for four, and they've got all of their entrance in right now. Duke is trying, as you said, to make it a clean sweep. They've got a good basketball conference. There's no question about that. And right now, Washington trying to carry the banner of the uh, Pac-10. Oregon State lost earlier this weekend. Many of you saw our previous game. Uh, the SMU Mustangs almost pulling off the big upset of the tournament uh, with Georgetown. Again, you've got a situation where one team has played Friday night. Washington uh, and one, though not impressively, against Nevada Reno, and the other team uh, has not played. Duke, uh, you think this will be a problem for the Blue Devils? I don't know. Duke's had a pretty good couple of days of workouts. They uh, took some days off after the Atlantic Coast Conference tournament. Mike Krzyzewski says we were beaten, we were worn out, Maryland really took us to task. And I think because of that, he took those two days off and he came back with a couple of rusty practices. But they've really kind of picked it up. He said the last two days have been good for them. So uh, I look for a good basketball game for both of these clubs here today. Of course, the big thing for the Huskies is their inside game. They've got the 6'9 player and the 7 foot player. And that's going to be a problem for Duke. It will. Now let's go back to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Frank, thank you. Let us, while we have a moment, go through the bracket board and show you where everybody stands. I know it gets sometimes very confusing at this point in the tournament. Here you're getting ready to watch Washington and Duke, and of course, as Frank has told you, the winner draws Dayton. So far, they have been the surprise team of the tournament, having eliminated Oklahoma yesterday. Now, meanwhile, up in the Mideast, two games on Thursday night, and they figure to be dandies. Remember, they are in Lexington. So Kentucky has an advantage here on Louisville. Last year in the tournament, Louisville defeated Kentucky by 12 points in a classic overtime game. Kentucky extracted a measure of revenge earlier this season when they pounded the Cardinals, but they'll get together again on Thursday night. The other game, Maryland, one of four teams from the ACC in the final 16. They'll be taking on Illinois, the Big Ten champion, 
And that figures to be one of the best games of the tournament so far. If Duke wins, by the way, we will have five teams from the ACC going to the final 16. One of them, of course, is North Carolina, the top seed in the tournament. They will be taking on Indiana. This is the first time that those two teams will have played since the 1981 championship game, which was won by the Hoosiers and Isaiah Thomas. The other game in these, Syracuse and Virginia will match up down there. Syracuse is out of the Big East, and some folks envisioned this team as a sleeper. Today, they were pressed by Virginia Commonwealth before they finally blew the game open midway through the second half. They had 14 unanswered points scored. They have a freshman guard by the name of Pearl Washington. I'm sure that many of you have seen him. Some of you haven't. If you get an opportunity, he is really going to be something. He really dominates the game. So they'll be taking on Virginia. Now, down in the Midwest, of course, we have the sentimental favorite. Here's Ray Meyer and DePaul. He had been eliminated in his first game each of the last three times out. And finally today, he comes away with the victory. He gets past a tough Illinois State team. DePaul played with a certain amount of poise. There has been a change with the team this year. You know that Joey Meyer, the son of Ray, is taking over the club next year. Well, more and more, his system has been used by the Blue Demons. In the past, Ray's squad sometimes played out of control out of Chicago. But I think this year you're going to find a more disciplined team, although Wake Forest is a very fine basketball team out of the ACC. The other game, a monster game, rematch of one a year ago, Keith Lee and Memphis State going up against Houston and Elijah Wan. Last year, Houston eliminated Memphis State in this regional semifinal. So Memphis, of course, will be shooting for some revenge. And right now, let's get you ready for Duke and Washington. And let's send you back now to Pullman, Washington, and Frank Lieber. Thank you very much, Brett. As we mentioned the coaching matchups, Marv Harshman and Mike Krzyzewski. There is the veteran coach, Harshman, 66 years of age, and hard to believe that Friday night against Nevada Reno was his first win in NCAA play. He is, however, the second winningest coach among active coaches in college basketball with a total of 619. As indicated, he will coach one more year before retiring. And this year would love to take his team to the Final Four, which is in his hometown. Mike Krzyzewski, the Duke coach, young coach in his fourth year. This is his first NCAA tournament. He played and he coached at Army, uh, coached uh, under Bobby Knight, as we pointed out, at Indiana. And he is the ACC Coach of the Year. And now for today's starting lineups, let's go to public address announcer Glenn Johnson. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Frio Court, the West Region second round game between the Huskies of Washington and the Blue Devils of Duke. And now, let's meet the starting lineup. For Washington at forward, a 6'10 junior from Leverkusen, West Germany, number 22, Detlef Schremp. For Duke, at forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona, number 32, Mark Allery. For Washington, at forward, 6'9 sophomore from San Francisco, California, number 33, Paul Fortier. For Duke, at forward, 6'7", junior from St. Catharines, Ontario, number 45, Dan Mahar. For Washington at center, a seven-foot freshman from Osnabrück, West Germany, number 40, Christian Vett. For Duke at center, a 6'8", sophomore from Rolling Hills, California, number 21, Jay Phillips. For Washington at guard, 6'4 sophomore from Yakima, Washington. Number 32, Shag Williams. For Duke at guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Washington, D.C. Number 24, Johnny Dawkins. For Washington at guard, 5'11", senior from Seattle, Washington. Number 20, Alvin Bond. For Duke at guard, 6-foot freshman from Falls Church, Virginia. Number 4, Tommy Amaker. And the coaches for Washington in his 13th year, Marv Hushman. And 
for Duke in his fourth year, Mike Sajewski. The Duke Blue Devils and the Washington Huskies back with the opening tip in just a moment. We're ready to tip it off here in Pullman, Washington. The Huskies and the Blue Devils and the officials working this ball game today representing the Pac-10, the ECAC, and the Southwest Conference. Two very young, very talented basketball teams. Detlef Shrimp will jump center along with Duke's Jay Billis. There's the Blue Devils with that great job in the uh, ACC tournament. Leading North Carolina, they have previously played two great games against Carolina. They always force the Tar Heels into a tough basketball game. Krzyzewski's done that since he's been at Duke. Shrimp, who some people call the White Magic, the leading the Magic Johnson. After a guy six, nine and a half, that's not a bad move. Not at all, and it was Mark Allery with a good hand in his face, and he still got it over. Zone press right now by the Huskies. They picked up 2-2-1, drop back. It looks like into a man-to-man. -man. Now they're in a zone. Young freshman running the show is Tommy Amaker. Enabling Krzyzewski to move up Dawkins to the shooting guard this year. Inside to Phyllis. Has it taken out of his hands, and a foul is caught on Alvin Vaughn. Right, one of the things that's made Duke successful this year, well, really there are two things. One is the insertion of Amaker into that point guard slot, which opened up that shooting guard for Dawkins. He's been a much better player, and Allery's been pulled out of the center slot to go to the wing. He's a much better player shooting and facing the basket. Vaughn looking for help. Fortier saves it from going out of bounds. Mahar is all over it. Duke opens up in the man-to-man. -man. Good lob. alley -oop. Shrimp for two more. And he burned Allery again. Shrimp is from Leverhusen, West Germany. As an exchange student in high school, it was recruited by Meyer Parchman. Good lob inside. You see it coming from the outside. Alvin Vaughn found Shrimp looking up at the basket. Good outstretched hands, a good catch, and he funneled it in. Foul is on Johnny Dawkins. That is the first team foul on the Duke Blue Devils in this game. Four to nothing. Good start for the Huskies. Duke, surprisingly, in that man-to-man -man defense, you would think the Huskies now would try to go to that inside game because they are much bigger on the inside. Jack Williams working the far side to Shrimp. Allery staying close to him. Vaughn with Amaker guarding him. Open in the middle for two, Jack Williams. And the Huskies of the Pac-10, who of course have the majority of the crowd rooting for them. Here's a steal, 48. On the drive. No basket. No basket. Once again, 48 with a shot. Look at Allery, how high up he is. Goes right over his hand. On the other side, that little shrimp coming up. Right there, falls on the rim. Basket disallowed. David Henderson comes in for Duke as Krzyzewski immediately goes to his bench. Six to nothing. Washington jumping out to an early lead. Again, like Georgetown in the first game, the team that has drawn the bye seems to be the team that is cold. Duke looks really nervous in the early going. Well, Krzyzewski was a little worried about that. Tramp turns it over. He said they were they were nervous last week before the ACC tournament, and he was concerned they'd be nervous coming in. Well, this is their first NCAA tournament. Oftentimes, you get into the heat of battle. It really settles you down because you do get nervous prior to going on the court, but once you kind of go up and down the floor a couple of times, it makes you feel a little better. Dawkins breaks the ice for the Duke Blue Devils. Duke has already turned it over four times here in the early going, and this game is not yet two and a half minutes old. Six to two, the Huskies lead it. Shrimp, who was runner-up to A.C. Green of Oregon State for the Pac-10 Player of the Year. Devon, Jack Williams with the board. And the two-pointer. Good move by Vaughn in the inside. He simply got around. Jack Williams was there and took it away from Dawkins on the rebound. Hamaker running the show. Falls Church, Virginia. Good two-three zone employed right now by the Huskies. Amaker with a good shot. Amaker with the miss. Anderson hustling. Shag Williams goes over his own bench and hits the deck. 
That's Shaq Williams coming off the bench, but let's watch him when he's on the floor. Right here. Good rebound. He got good position on Dawkins in the inside. Simply went strong back to the basket. Washington is at four of its first six shots from the field. Duke has had just two attempts. Good 2-3 zone employed right now by the Huskies. You can see right now they're trying to attack it with a 1-2-2 two, two with Dawkins on the front, Amaker and Henderson on the wings. Henderson inside to Phyllis, moving in on the big man, Christian Belt. And Belt will pick up the foul. Seven-foot freshman from Osnabrück in the northwest part of West Germany. Somebody tried to dub the, the two West Germans the Berlin Wall, but it doesn't really apply because where they grew up is uh, two, three hundred miles from Berlin. Two shots, relax Billis is on the line with a pair here for the Duke Blue Devils, 6'8 sophomore. He's a 62% free throw shooter from Rolling Hills, California. You look over this Duke roster, and they just about cover the United States, don't they? I'll tell you what, that's a travel agent's dream, trying to recruit for that group. <laughs> Their starters are from Arizona, Canada, California, Virginia, Washington. The Hires back in the game now. Phyllis takes the rest after his two free throws. Eight to four. Washington leading with 16 and a half minutes remaining. Shrimp is expected to be a, a mainstay of the West German Olympic team in Los Angeles. is a freshman, but he's 20 years old, and he's played three years of international ball, and I think you'd have to consider him a very mature freshman. I'll tell you what, that was a good hook shot he shot right there. They've been working with him on that shot, and there's a turnover. Duke throws it away again. Fifth turnover for the Blue Devils as Alry tosses it away. As the field goal percentage so far, Washington's had much the better, but they're playing much better than they did the other night. In fact, against Nevada, Reno, they went the first five minutes without scoring. Washington's really lighting up Duke right now. They're shooting outside, inside. They're doing just about everything they have to do and doing it successfully. This is their biggest lead, 12-4. Four. four of the five ACT teams in the tournament have won this weekend. And Duke is the one left. It will belong to the Blue Devils out of bounds. Everybody was trying to save the basketball for the Huskies. Watch them right here. You see right there, Velp right there. Shag Williams tried to save it. Velp walking the tight rope. He couldn't save it. Amaker gets it in bounds to Henderson. He normally gives him some instant offense coming off the bench. Alley oop to Billis, who pulls it down, pulls it back up, and scores. Most guys will just leave it up there and put it up. He brought it down and took it back up inside and went right between Bill and Shrimp. Six point lead for the Huskies. Inside Oregon State, the Big Ten, or rather, I should say, Pac 10 champions, and got the seed in the tournament. We talked about Duke having one advantage in this basketball game, and that was their quickness. And it's evident that they're trying to stay that man-to-man, -man, but it's not happening right now. Jack Williams has started off hot. He's hit his first three shots in the ball game, and it's a 14 to six Washington advantage. Amaker, the pass to Henderson on top. They drop back from that zone defense, a full court press that they have, which Shrimp is on the point of, back into a 2-3 zone. It's pretty tough on Duke to get inside. Henderson carries one. He may be their sixth man, but he's one of their leading scorers, averaging 13 and a half points a game coming off the bench. David Henderson from Drury, North Carolina. He's been double figures 24 times this year. That's not bad for a sixth man. Not bad at all. 48, charge. Harshman displeased. Timeout with 14 minutes, 25 seconds left to play in the first half. The Washington Huskies of Marv, Har of Marv Harshman have looked impressive here in the early going. Uh, Certainly contrasted to their play of the other night, and uh, Harshman can get very animated on that bench when things are going well. He's been in Washington 13 years, and prior to that, he was in Washington State here in Poland for 13 years. So he knows his way around these parts. Huskies have hit their last four in a row, and seven out of nine from the field here in the early going. 
Washington Exchange defense is a little bit. They've gone back to the man-to-man -man away from that zone, and immediately he was recognized by Duke. Go on to Dawkins on the alley-oop, and Shag Williams fouls him underneath. How would you like to alley-oop to a 6-2 guard? He can get upstairs, as he showed you right there. Dawkins will go to the line. Watch the leap here. He's in the air. It's a good lob right there. Good feet. Johnny Dawkins. 83% free throw shooter for the Blue Devils. In fact, both their guards, he and Amaker, shoot 83% from the line. Very important in those tight ball games when you're down those last few seconds. You've got to have free throws made. You put the ball in the hands of the guys that can control it, and that's Dawkins and Amaker, and you know they're going to walk to the line and most of the time make those shots. Duke seems to know. Here's pressure of Henderson on the full court pressure. No he basket. He double dribbled the basketball. Once he stole it, he came back, lost the handle, and double dribbled. Very alert call by the official. Start to say that Duke is used to playing tight basketball games. 14 of their last 16 have been decided by five points or less. Four overtime games also in those last eight. Blocking foul. Foul on Henderson. Shrimp amazes you at six nine and a half. He plays some center, he plays some forward, and he plays some guard. He is all over the court. You see him with the basketball. Look at that left hand right there. Henderson with the block. I think the most amazing thing about Trimp is the fact that he was a soccer player until the age of 14, and someone introduced him to basketball, and he's only been playing since he was 14 years of age. And one thing he told us yesterday, that uh, at that age, he didn't like his soccer coach. There's one reason he went to basketball. How about that shot? Christian Pell, the freshman. Right, that's not the same guy we saw play Friday night. It's amazing. Henderson going inside to Phyllis, traveling. Henderson and Duke turns it over again. Look at this freshman. Good ball fake. Got him in the air and he threaded his way between two Duke defenders and a reverse layup off the glass. That's about three good moves in one right there. He had 16 points and 10 rebounds against Reno, Nevada, but didn't look that impressive. Howery comes back into the game for Duke as the Blue Devils apply the pressure. They trail by six with 13 and a half minutes remaining. Washington has been a little streaky at times. They had one win streak of eight. This time they turn it over. Dawkins on the drive. Shrimp got his arm. Two shots. I think Shrimp and Fortier were measuring him. If he'd have gone up a little bit later, they were both going to try to block that ball, but Dawkins, a very heady, very smart sophomore from Duke, took it up a little early and drew the foul. Johnny Dawkins, who's from Washington, D.C., will go to the line. He's really the catalyst, isn't he? Uh, it, it all revolves around what Dawkins does. Yeah, he really does. You know, they've got such a young club. They start four sophomores and a freshman, and Dawkins, the left-handed guy from Washington, you know, he, he is the highest-scoring sophomore in Duke history, and he started every game for two years since he's been there. Their sophomore class, and as you mentioned, four of them are starting now, was regarded uh, three years ago as the best recruiting class in the nation, and uh, it's starting to pay off. The year before that, he had all kinds of problems recruiting. Well, he really did. You know, they did a national story on Duke University, the fact that they had lost all of the key players they had gone after, and then they came right after it with that good recruiting class. Well, foul by Mahar. Team foul. And Shrimp will throw it in. 48 back out on top to Vaughn. Shag Williams has been hot here in the early going. Working it around the perimeter, looking for the big guy inside. Belt. Duke doing a good job of contesting inside. There they got Shrimp free. Great body control. And that's something. Declan Shrimp gets his third basket. He's averaged 16 points a game and 7.3 rebounds. The coaches tell us he spends every waking hour with basketball. If he's not playing it, he's watching it. Nice soft jumper from the corner on the harp. That's his first. He is from Canada and has already made the Canadian Olympic team. In fact, he's going to leave school the 1st of April to work out with the Canadian team in preparation for the Olympics. Look at Dawkins' hustle. Good hustle by Johnny Dawkins. 48 let up a little bit. He should have hustled. Dawkins just outran him for the basketball. Watch Detlef Shrimp. We talked about his athletic ability. Watch him hesitate right here. Allery floats by. He holds the ball just long enough to get him by and then lets it go and it goes through. 
That was intended for Dawkins, but Fortier got in front of him to break it up. Washington down quickly. Shag Williams for two. Good transition that time by the Huskies. They got the turnover, and Shaq Williams, with no hesitation, went straight to the glass. 20 to 14. The Huskies lead it with 12 minutes left to play. Henderson from outside. Two points. And Washington has hit its last seven shots in a row. Amaker trying to put good pressure on Vaughn out front. That's a pretty good matchup, a little bit. Inside the trip. Soft jumper doesn't go, and Belt this time is all over Allery. Belt will pick up the foul. That's his second. Belt commits the foul on the shrimp miss, and you'll see it here. Allery with good offensive and defensive rebounding position. Right on his back was Belt. Amaker will be throwing it in here to Dawkins. Blue Devils have been behind since the outset. They went down six to nothing and haven't been able to make it up. They trailed 20 to 16. And again, the Huskies are going to stay in that zone defense. Duke has had some success outside with the last couple of trips down the floor. Henderson canning the last shot. And Dalton's now outside. This is a Duke basketball team's first game ever in the state of Washington. Dawkins with the miss and Belt with the rebound. In fact, these two teams have met just once before, but seven years ago at Durham. And Duke won that one. Shag Williams, turnaround jumper. First one he's missed. And again, Belt over the top. That's three. Phyllis and Allery getting good rebounding position on the defensive glass. Belt nowhere to go. Being very aggressive going to the glass, but nowhere to go. And he had to go right up on Phyllis's back. You see the push right there. Phyllis in great position. Allery right there with him. So he'll get a rest, come out of the ball game with three personal fouls. Placing him, a young man did a pretty good job the other night, Reggie Rogers, number 35 for the Washington Huskies. Duke with a chance to trim it to two here. Henderson with the pull-up jumper. Fight for the rebound. Henderson saved him, but right to shrimp. Long with the behind-the-back dribble, the steal by Amaker, down to Dawkins, an easy two. Let it do. Go right back after it again. You get a basket on a steal. Go right back after it and put the pressure on the offense. Huskies handled it. Answering is Shag Williams. Five out of six from the field for Williams. He has ten points. And Shag Williams has averaged only six points a game. We got a fast-paced game here in the first half. Both of these clubs running, pressing, good defense, some good individual efforts also. I make her force that one inside. Nowhere to go. Vaughn. Down to a fine pass to Williams who gets another one. Williams has a dozen. And Washington's lead is back to six. We talked about the Duke, but just Washington showing right now what they can do with their fast break. They've capitalized a couple of times. Dawkins with the miss. Henderson trying to follow. Nice pass to Dawkins. Williams is on him. Allery with the jumper. Allery, who made the ACC All-Conference team, gets his first basket with 9.36 left to play in the first half. Washington leading 24 to 20. Timeout. Frank Lieber along with Larry Connolly back in Pullman. You know, the problems the other night, Nevada Reno gave Washington was in the quickness, wasn't it? It was, and we talked about Duke's quickness at the stop. Look at Amaker with that steal right there. Good heads-up play, and there's his favorite target right there, and that's Johnny Dawkins. Thank you, right in the middle. 24 to 20. We're also talking about Shag Williams, number 32 of the Washington Huskies, who has 12 points in this game. His career high is 14. He's got 12 in the first nine minutes. At the conclusion of every CBS Sports NCAA tournament broadcast, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Full court pressure by the Duke Blue Devils. And look who's bringing it up. Six, nine and a half guard at this point. Detlef Shrimp. Shooting percentage, Washington has come out. Smoking. Rogers. Into Shrimp in the middle. 
That's a great move. Caught it in the air, kind of gave a little ball fake on the way down. Looks like he uh, he might. Look, he's hanging on to his uh, right side. He might be hurting a little bit as he came down for making that shot. Billis driving to the hole, gets the rebound, and the foul is going to be on Rogers. I don't know if Shrimp uh, pulled a muscle or something, but he looked obviously like he started down the floor limping a little. Watch it again. You'll see him go up with this ball right here, and he takes it up with the little baby hook right there. Oh, that's where he got him, right there. He got it right. It looks like in the upper hip right there on the right side, and I think that's what, yeah, it's where he got him. It hurt. Now, we used to call it Charlie Horse. They call that anymore, yeah. Billis on the line. Got the good roll. Bounce up twice. Got it to come through. Billis is a real hard worker. One of those guys that brings his lunch pail to work just to plug it. Free throws are keeping Duke in this basketball game. They're six out of six. And Washington has not shot a free throw. A little banging away from the ball. Doug McNeely, who just came into the game for Duke, number 11. McNeely and Shrimp coming at it on the inside. Shrimp trying to post up. He's trying to grab him right there. He can't get away from him. Washington is already over the limit in foul, so Duke is going to be shooting one and one the rest of the first half, which has eight minutes and 49 seconds to go. Duke's only got four. That's Rogers. Reggie Rogers, 6'7", sophomore from Sacramento. Six-point lead for the Huskies, who played well here in the first half, upholding the honor of the Pac-10. Oregon State has been eliminated. UCLA, of course, did not make the tournament. A lot of people around the country seem to judge the Pac-10 by where UCLA is. Anderson Travel. They what caused that turnover right there was Vaughn. He really is very quick on the outside of that zone defense. When Alvin Vaughn is out there and moving across, Clay Damon, who's in the game now, really creates a problem for Duke. The zone defense is not a passive one. It is very active. Vaughn working one-on-one -on -one against Dawkins. Two quickest players on the floor. And the Huskies turn it over. Clay Damon, who has just come into the game. Almost hometown for Damon. He played at uh, Spokane High School, some uh, 75 miles up the road. Had a good outing off the bench against Nevada Reno. Haven't heard too much from Mallory here in the first half. It's really been the other players who carried the offensive load, and he's been their leading scorer, Ian Dawkins. Dawkins from 20 feet. That's what he does best. When he gets that jump shot straight out, he's as deadly as there is in anybody in the country. He has 10 points here in the first half. And Duke again narrows it to four. 28-24, 48. Looking for help. Guarded closely by Allery. Duke trying to play the good man-to-man -man defense, and the Huskies trying to post up. Duke giving good offside help, and it's difficult to lob the ball in there when you've got that offside help. Shrimp with the pull-up jumper. Drew the foul. Looks like McNeely got him again. That's the second time in a row. Amaker comes back into the game. And McNeely will get a rest. McNeely is a senior. And that's rare on this Duke team. Last year, you know, they made a great uh, turnaround from last year. 11 and 17 to 24 and 9 in one year. And they had a combination of seniors and freshmen. And the freshmen were playing and the seniors weren't. And that does not make for a happy situation. There's Christian Velt, the seven-foot center for the Huskies, on the bench with three fouls. To show you the maturity of this Duke basketball team, they started out 14-1 and one in the year, went into the heart of their AC schedule, and lost four games in a row. A team that was very young could have folded right then the rest of the season, but they came right back and won eight in a row. 29-24. Washington, as we near the seven-minute mark here in the first half. Anderson trying to drop it inside to Allery. He had a couple of hands in his face there, and I think he'll put it on Rogers. That's his second. Phyllis is a big kid, 6'8", 215. He really posts up very well. And of late, he's been the guy who's really been carrying a lot of the load for Duke. He's been one of the better players they've had late in the season. He had 10 points and 11 rebounds in that big upset against North Carolina in the ACC tournament. 
Duke has been in nine NCAA tournaments, and they have reached the final four four times. That is a high ratio. First back in 78, they played Kentucky in the final game. We're beaten. You're a long mater. Mr. Givens and company. It's a pretty good basketball team. Both clubs had good teams. Gets them both, makes it a 29 to 26 ball game. Duke's going to stay with that man to man press. The Huskies so far have handled it pretty well, and it's been Shrimp who's been bringing the ball up. You know, when you're playing against a man to man defense, you get a guy like Shrimp who's 6'9, and if they press, it really brings out another guy who's not used to being on the floor like that. And he handles the ball and brings it up so easily. And he likes the comparisons they make uh, to Magic Johnson because he's that type of player about the same height as Magic and can do many of the same things. He can play just about any position on the floor. 48. Washington having trouble penetrating at this point. Shrimp over Henderson. Hamaker with the rebound. Here come the Devils with a chance to narrow it to one. Washington looked a little sluggish on offense that time. Looks like they didn't know exactly what they wanted to do. Henderson driving the lane is fouled by Thayman. Free throw statistic. So he said that's keeping Duke in the ball game here in the first half. They're only down three points right now. The Blue Devils have been throwing a lot more free throws all year. Why? Now, why would that be? Well, a lot of it is because they penetrate to the basket so much. They force the ball to the inside. They've got good, strong power players inside, and Allery, Mahar, and Phyllis. You got Dawkins and Amaker who also like to take it in there. That's an amazing statistic to me, Frank. And shoot 233 more free throws than all of your opponents. Anderson, one out of one from the line. They don't miss either, apparently. Well, thanks to the young. They get the rebound on the Dawkins with the miss. Golden. Alden Rogers. They give the basket to Dawkins. He's got 12 points, and we are suddenly tied for the first time in this game at 29. The Huskies have had problems with opponents when they get down to the free throw line. Yeah, I said earlier, the last trip down the floor, they looked a little sluggish on offense. The defensive Duke has really picked up a lot more pressure. They turn it over. Here's Duke now with a chance to take the lead for the very first time. You know, oftentimes we talk so much about strategy, but there's a lot more than just strategy to this basketball game. You've got to have conditioning. And it looks like Duke right now is in pretty good condition. They're really playing good defense. Washington about to send a couple of substitutes into the game. They've turned it over eight times. Allery gives the Blue Devils the lead for the first time. Five minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the first half as Duke leads for the very first time on the basket by Mark Allery, his second. And they turn it over for the ninth time to the Huskies. Frank, that's three consecutive trips down the floor for the Huskies. That they, two of them, they turned it over, and the other one was a bad shot. I think it's simply because it looks like Duke is playing a little bit better defense. Good, strong, tough, good help away from the ball. Allery missing the turnaround and Fortier grabbing the rebound. Mark Marshman would like for his guys to hang on to the basketball on this trip down the floor, if at all possible. Notice the pressure. Look at Dawkins out there on Clay Damon. He's playing him very, very tough. Taylor out there and Amaker on him. Fortier over Allery. Short. Allery grabs the rebound. Great outlet to Dawkins. One on one with Taylor. And he is fouled. Dave Taylor picks up the personal foul. What's the end result of here? Johnny Dawkins with a good look at that play right there. He just took care of the basketball. Taylor with the foul. It's very tough to take that ball away from Dawkins when he gets that close to the basket. Dawkins will be going to the line for the fifth time today. He's four out of four. Has 12 points here in the first half. Three assists. They missed two in a row after making what? Ten in a row? I don't want to belabor this point, but I thought the last four trips down the floor when Washington shot the basketball, when they did get two shots off, both were short. 
And the other two times they threw the ball away. That's lack of concentration. That can occasionally mean uh, con a conditioning problem. And they look like they were a little tired. Time out with four minutes and 44 seconds left to play in the first half. Coming up at halftime, a complete recap of the entire weekend with scores and highlights from Brent Musburger in our studio in New York. Amazing job by Mike Krzyzewski of the Duke Blue Devils this year. Coach who moved his center to shooting forward. He moved his point guard to shooting guard, made his third best returning score a reserve, and started a freshman at point guard for the second straight year. And look what they've done, 24-9. From 11 and 17. Look at the rebounds. Duke with 11, Washington with the four, but the shooting is what's caused the, the minimum number of rebounds. 70% for Washington and 59 for Duke. But the Huskies not getting many second shots as a result of that rebound edge to the Blue Devils. Shrimp inside looking for help. It's Tim Kuyper is coming to the game, number 34 for the Huskies. Kuyper guarded by Mahar goes to Rogers. Rogers with the jumper tries to bang it off the window. And the foul is on Kuyper. I thought that trip down the floor, the Huskies looked like they were in a little bit better position to play. They looked like they were a little more alive. Look at Anderson on Shrimp right there. They're trying to keep the ball away from him for good reason because he's the leading scorer on this Husky team. Rogers with the move to the inside. That could have been a charge right there. Winner of this game advances to Los Angeles next Friday night to take on Dayton, right? Right. That's the surprise team in the NCAA tournament so far. SMU almost was. <laughs> Dayton beating LSU and Oklahoma, the number two seeded team in the West to get into that regional semifinals in Los Angeles. Anderson now two out of two from the line. Free throw shooting paying off for the Duke Blue Devils in the first half. They were down by eight at one point. And right now they're enjoying their biggest lead of the game at four with four minutes and five seconds left to play Duke, in the half. Duke has stayed with that man-to-man -man defense the entire first half. Kuiper looking for help in the shrimp. Great. Oh, beautiful. Looks like he's going to put up the 20-foot jumper, and then he spotted Alvin Vaughn all by his lonesome underneath. That's why we say he's such a complete player. He was a unanimous all pac 10 selection. And barely nosed out by A.C. Green as the player of the year in the Big Ten. Sure, that's an offensive call. Yes, it will be against Henderson, who plowed into Shrimp. It's a Magic Johnson type play, isn't it, by Shrimp? Well, we talked about Shrimp and the way he can do things. Right there's one of them. That's past the basketball. He averages almost three assists a game, besides being the leading scorer and the leading rebounder. He's just a complete player. Harshman uh, paid him a nice compliment yesterday. We were talking, and Marv said he sees the game. That's about the nicest thing you can say about a player. Well, he's got a lot of enthusiasm for it, too. I talked earlier about him watching the game. I mean, he's all the time either watching or playing. Rogers, he's a gym rat. He get right down to it. Vaughn with the miss. And Rogers going high for the stuff. And he is fouled. Count it. On the, on the miss by Rogers. Watch him go up with the jam right here. Good strong move. Allery on his back. Watch it from another angle. Upstairs. Della Shrimp with a move to the inside. There's the shot. He's trying to get in position to rebound, but it's Rogers who comes up with it right there. Allery on his back. First foul on Mark Allery and Rogers on the line with a chance to put the Huskies back in the lead. Score is tied at 33. Realize they've scored just about as many points as we had in the whole first game out here between SMU and Georgetown. It was quite a chess match. A lot of coaching going on in that first game. Georgetown just barely dodging a bullet by edging SMU 37 to 36. Billis and Billis. Somehow or another, he's able to get that basketball inside and muscles his way up. He's not a great leaper. He's just very strong. Good steal by Allery. Allery on the drive is fouled by Kuiper. I think Rogers may get it. It looks like he may be pointing to Rogers. They had him surrounded on both sides as he was going down the floor. That was Kuiper. You're right, Frank. Two minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the first half. 35-33 Duke. It is Kuiper with the personal foul. That'll be his second. 
And Allery on the line with four points and four rebounds. He's averaging 17.4 per game. So he's off to a slow start in this one, but he's a perfect three out of three from the line. Very high percentage shooter, 57% from the field and 75% from the free throw line. Well, two guys in this Duke lineup who don't shoot very well, Phyllis and Mahara. The other four shoot extremely well. So Duke with a four-point lead at 37 to 33. The Blue Devils have done it at the line with 15 out of 18 from the free throw line. Vaughn with the miss, a scrap underneath, sends one of the officials almost into the first row. And they will give the ball uh, to the Huskies. Duke even stays in the man-to-man -man defense on the out-of-bounds plays. 95% of the college teams in the country zone out-of-bounds, but not Duke. Shrimp. Here we call the foul on underneath here. As Shrimp started to make his move, he was held. And it'll be a one-and-one -one situation for Gutlet Shrimp. Shrimp is this team's leading score, rebounder, Playmaker, thief, and foul shooter. What else can you do except sweep up afterwards? Henderson comes out. And Dawkins, who had the rest, back in there. Surprisingly, he doesn't have any rebounds. He's got seven and a half on average for this year. One out of three from the free throw line, but saved by Rogers from going out of bounds. That pass nearly took Shrimp's head off. That was a real bullet. You gotta catch that in self-defense. Rogers walk. Huskies turn it over again with 2.20 left to play in the half. Washington plays strong defense. In fact, their defense is ranked fourth in the nation. Their average yield is 58 points per game. Look at the difference in the free throws. Look at the difference of 15 points just from the line. And with Duke leading by four, it's obvious that the free throws have made the difference. Allery, 20 foot range. Got a nice touch from out there. He can do that, and that's why they moved him out of that post position to that wing so he could go out there and face up and shoot that shot. Made him a lot better player and given him a lot of confidence. That gives Duke its biggest lead of the game. Shrimp almost loses it to Allery, gets it back. And Shag Williams trying to go up for the shot. He's blasted by Jay Billis. Billis second. What happens here is Shrimp looks up and sees Shaq Williams breaking for the basket. It's a good feed. The ball slips out of his hands, goes out of bounds, and the foul is committed after the ball hits the brace. Once it hits the brace, the play is over. Harshman, who doesn't agree with the call, and most of the fans who probably don't understand the rule. Expressing their dismay. Very partisan Washington crowd, as you might expect. Allery again. He likes that spot. He can get there. Spots up in practice every day and shoots 15 to 20 shots from right there. You can see what it's done for him. After the slow start, he now has 12 points. Rogers has it taken away by Amaker. Off to Dawkins. Dawkins throws it away and Shrepp comes up with it. A little ragged right now, but fun to watch, nevertheless. Duke recovered very well from that. The Huskies had a break, and they really come back, came back very quickly. Foul is called away from the ball. There's the turnover situation. Pretty close. Voice off the turnovers. Duke has really capitalized. Much more so than Washington has. And the turnovers were almost dead even. Foul is on Allery, which will be his second. And going to the line will be Shrimp. Allery going to get a little bit of a breather. We've got one minute and five seconds left in the first half. Might be a good time for him. Boy, Shrimp's struggling at the line. He really is. He made his first free throw, and since then, has missed three in a row, all in the front end of the one and one. Less than a minute to go in the half, and Duke leading 41 to 33. After the Blue Devils were behind by eight in the early going, and right now they're going to wait for the last shot. Like Washington's going to come up and pick up man to man. What a chance for Duke to go out here with a 10 point lead after the horrible start that they had. That's really a big turnaround. 
A high work in the outside with McNeely. Lamech are very, very quick. He and Dawkins really should handle the basketball out front. Look at this Duke team. You realize their future is really ahead of them. Well, they start four juniors and, and four, excuse me, four sophomores and one freshman. Hamaker takes the shot. Well, but you heard the band, the Washington band, doing the little countdown number. He rushed the shot. And Washington manages to come up with a basket on the other end. As the buzzer sound, that's the end of the first half with the score, Duke 43, Washington 35. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue with Brent Musburger in New York after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Country out here in Western Washington, Pullman, halftime, Duke leading Washington 43-35. I would have to echo what Brent said. If if Duke wins this game and you have a friend in the ACC, you better go into hiding this week because I think you're going to hear from him. I've got several I'm going to hear from. <laughs> Statistics in the first half, we kept talking about foul shooting. I guess that's the biggest stat, wasn't it? Well, it really is. You know, we talked about the 233 attempts that they had over their opponents this year. Obviously, you can look and see why they do it. 15 of 18 in the first half of Washington, 1 of 5. How about these field goal percentages? They're both teams very hot, but came at different times. Washington early, Duke late, and rebounding. Yeah, Duke really has the advantage of it. 14 to eight right now but there aren't a lot of shots to grab well Christian Belp is back in the game he had three personal fouls the seven foot freshman center for the Huskies maybe that'll make a difference Duke inbounding to start the second half they have an eight point advantage after being down by eight early in the game it's quite a turnaround for Duke to be able to come from that far down and to go that far ahead very impressive again because of their youth four sophomores and the freshmen out there for the most part doing a lot of cool not losing their cool when they got behind Tillis went in with a shot that was called for traveling no basket that was a good call Phyllis really trying to muscle his way through that husky defense you know it's amazing to me a guy who is six eight weighs that much and is so slow still is able to get the ball up and in for the blue devils just a hard worker Washington's leading score in the first half was uh, Shag Williams, who had 12. His career high is 14. Shrimp brought up with nine in the first half and about six before he got into foul trouble. Well, Duke's putting that good pressure defense on a good. Good release by Shrimp. That's the guy that's got to heat it up for the Huskies if they're going to get back in this game. 11 now for Devlin Shrimp. Washington's out with their 2 2 1 full court zone crush, and Shrimp's on the front of it with Williams. Here, the freshman point guard. Shrimp got a piece of that shot by Allery, and here come the Huskies again. Allery looked like he was almost in slow motion when he let that ball go. Shrimp with a little double pump action there, short with the shot, rebound Dawkins. Dawkins a little dipsy do, a little hesitation move at the free throw line, and then putting into high gear again and draws the foul. You can just about write it down in the book that Johnny Dawkins has got the basketball mid-court and there's only two players back. He's going to take it all the way or he's going to stop and pull up and shoot that jump. Shag Williams picks up his second personal foul. And Dawkins, who hit five out of six in the first half and route to a 13-point half. Bellis had 10 and Allery had 10 for the Blue Devils. Winner goes on against Dayton, the Cinderella team of this tournament so far, Friday night in Los Angeles in the regional semifinal. Dawkins having another good day. Dawkins has had 37 straight games in double figures and 60 of his last 61. Is that consistency? I would say so. That's only over two years. Belt is fouled. Billis. That's his first personal foul. The Duke's going to go into a zone defense maybe for the first time on an out-of-bounds play. They are. They're going to get into a 2-3 zone. Fortier working out top along with Vaughn. Vaughn takes the shot over the backboard and out-of-bounds. That's a tough break for the Huskies because Fortier had the inside position and had the ball come off in the front of the basket. He would have had it and gone back up with it, but it went over the top of the basket. Amaker and Dawkins. 
bring it down. Bob pass to Allery, almost lost it. Gets it back. Phyllis, back-to-back -back fouls here. I know the gallery had control of that basketball when he went up for that shot. He had better control of it. He could have sunk it because he was right on the baseline, only about six feet out. It looked like it was kind of floundering in his hands. Huskies down by eight at halftime, and that's where it is right now, 45 to 37. Duke's changed defenses. They've gone away from that man-to-man -man that helped them so much in the first half, and they've gone to a 2-3 zone. The seven-footer going up in the air with Bellis. Three quick fouls. So Bellis, three fouls here in the first two minutes and 15 seconds in the second half. She's his own defense. Allery drops off of him right here. And Bellis comes up, tries to confront him. The foul's called right there. Getting off a lot of the basketball, I thought. David Henderson comes off the bench to relieve Phyllis, who will discuss it, the way things have gone. Belp is a 63% free throw shooter. This is his first free throw attempt. Seems rare to see the Huskies going to the free throw line. Seems like we've seen nothing but Duke Blue Devils at the free throw line. That certainly was the case in the first half with Duke running up the big advantage from the stripe. <laughs> Full-court pressure by Washington. See Williams and Devin Shrimp out on the front of it. Six-point lead for Duke. Charging foul called on Dawkins. Dawkins wound up taking a good shot in the ribs from uh, Vaughn. And they call the foul on Dawkins as Frank Krzyzewski up off the bench. That's his second. Now Duke goes back to that man-to-man -man defense that they that helped him so much in the first half. Belp in the high post. Mahar is staying close to him. Good speed on the beautiful pass. Jeff Lips shrimp with his sixth basket. And it was Shaq Williams for cutting the basketball. Four-point game at 45-41. Look how quick Dawkins is. Oh, great steal by Mahar. A step quicker was Vaughn this time, and he gets it down court quickly for the Huskies. They have a chance to pull within two. They're looking inside for Belt. 48 drives, drops it off, charge. Offensive foul on Paul Fortier of the Huskies, his second. Mahar with a good defensive position, got himself established in the middle of the lane right there, and Fortier ran right over the top of him. You can see it once more right here. Fortier with the ball, trying to make a good offensive move. Good defensive position by Mahar. Amaker brings it up court quickly to Henderson. Dawkins open from 17. And Belt rebounded for the Huskies. Back 10 coach champion, Shrimp. Shrimp. And that really gets the crowd going now. Two-point game, 45-43. Here's Vaughn with a steal. Takes it from Henderson, 48. Conley at Pullman and the Huskies are on a roll here. Watch this move down the court. We talked about quickness. Watch the Huskies right here. Shrimp with a fill on the right lane. Look at this move. That's an NBA move. And then they came back with another steal and a dunk here by 48. And the score is tied at 45 as we go back to live action. Washington four out of six here in the second half. Duke has not hit a basket. They're 0 for 3. Second half, four minutes old. Amaker has it slapped out of his hands, and he was fouled by Vaughn. Second foul on Alvin Vaughn, the 5'11 senior. Washington showing us a little bit of their quickness also. Last couple of trips, they've gotten the ball. One big steal on the inside by, by Washington, and Duke Bassett got the turn, or the Washington Bassett got a Duke timeout. 
Duke seemed to have it under control at halftime with an eight-point advantage, but the Huskies have fought themselves right back into this basketball game. And the curve to Dawkins from 20. Give him a hard credit. He kept it alive and slapped it back out to give Duke another chance at the basket. Amaker just six feet tall from Falls Church, Virginia. Henderson with the shot. Big move. Dan Mahar, the six-seven junior from St. Catharines, Ontario, comes up with the basket to give Duke the lead. 48 picks up the foul. That is his third. So you've got two. Huskies now with three personal fouls. Velp and Fortier. And Mahar with a chance to complete the three-point play. Shrimp with the rebound. Forty-seven forty-five. Duke out in front. Fifteen and a half minutes remaining. That was Duke's first basket. Shrimp. Every time you get it in there, you know it's virtually an automatic two or a foul, one or the other. And in that case, Allery gets the foul, his third. Duke's pressure was forcing the Huskies to go back door. Shrimp that time again released. He got a basket earlier on the release. That time he went back again and almost got a three-point opportunity. You mentioned Shrimp was an exchange high school student his last year. That's where Marv Harshman uh, found him. Centralia, Washington, and the same goes for Velp. He also spent a year over here. Sometimes you think uh, the coaches have tentacles all the way over to the continent, but that's not really the case, although they do go over there and scout some players. There are a lot of players playing college basketball in this country now who come from foreign countries. But Shrek just happened to show up, as did Velp, right in Harshman's backyard. Loose ball. Dawkins manages to hang on. Foul is going to be on Vaughn. So the Huskies guard picks up his second. Team foul situation. Washington is five, and so does Duke. So each team with one more to give before we get into the bonus. Back to force that pass inside the Mahar. No, Dawkins. There was nowhere in there that they could have gotten that basketball into Mahar. It was just too congested, too many Huskies around. Vaughn and Amaker. Little one on one action. And the Husky front court. Shrimp matched up with Henderson. Pretty good height advantage there. Well, Velp's got a big height advantage on the heart. Shag Williams, who was hot of the first half, missed that jumper. Foul is going to be on Dawkins. And that is three on the catalyst of the Duke offense. Washington's come out a little bit more fired up in the second half than the way they played in the first half, particularly the last five minutes. Next Duke foul, Washington will be in the bonus the rest of the way. Easy. Washington with the big height advantage, and Duke with the edge and quickness. Vaughn throws it away. Costly turnover for Washington. They had a chance to grab the lead there, and that would have been their first one in the second half. Again, if you're trying to slate, Washington came out smoking at the start of the game, filled up an eight-point advantage. And then it was Duke's turn, and they led by eight at halftime. Game tied at 47. Allery fouled by Belt. That is four on the seven-foot freshman. Allery got great position. He was down low, got on the block, and posted up. Belt tried to reach in and grab the basketball. There was nowhere to go get it. Watch out where he's moving the position. Good post up inside right there. Back to live action. As Duke inbounding in the offensive court. Anderson to Amaker. Dawkins from Sonny. Short. Good outlet by Bell, but Vaughn can't catch up to it. Maybe it wasn't too good an outlet. He had the right thing in mind. Ran the post pattern. Nobody was there to catch it. Kid's got a pretty good arm on it. Fourteen minutes and seven seconds remaining as Belt goes to the bench with those four fouls. And Rogers comes back into the game. Six seven sophomore who's an excellent leaper for the Huskies. 
Score tied at 47. All alone there was Allery and Dawkins threw a little bit too tall. Hamaker couldn't save it. And it'll be the Huskies ball. Go champions of the Pac-10. Team get a little bit sloppy right now. Both clubs committing a, a number of turnovers here in the second half. But it's about even at least in the midway part of the second half. Well, Duke had the turnovers early in the game. And then Washington had them uh, in the latter stages of the first half. That's the way that the second half is started. Bell. Good ball movement right now by the Huskies. That's where they want it. Shrimp over Henderson. Deathless Shrimp gets his eighth basket. He has 19 points. And puts his team back out in front, 49 to 47. Dawkins is fouled by Shrimp, his second. You know, when Duke breaks into that zone press at half court that Washington is showing them right there, they're not penetrating and getting beyond those, that first layer, that first layer of defense. Shrimp made the foul that time, but if they'd have carried it right into the middle, they had it wide open. It's a 17 foul on the Huskies. So the Blue Devils will be in the one and one. In fact, both sides will be the rest of the way. And Dawkins failing to convert. He's missed two out of eight so far. Huskies are down two. Rogers. Bahar is all over it. Good pass. Shag Williams. Well, Kip Bond put him a great pass. He made the move baseline. Looked up, and there was Williams standing on the other side of the basket. Williams has tied his career high of 14 points. Cross court pass almost got away. Dawkins slides in for the two pointer. Or he defies you to come in there and try to block it. He went right at Rogers, who's six seven. Dawkins at six two went straight to the rim. Seventeen for Dawkins. Washington with the two point advantage. Shrimp fade away. Got another one. Great fade away jumper over the right shoulder, virtually unstoppable. Fifty three forty nine. Henderson two. That's where that defense was open, right in the middle. And that time, Dawkins got it to the middle and fed it out right to the left side to Henderson. He got the basket. Henderson ringing the bell. Sub preparing to come into the game for each side. Damon for Washington. 48 backing off. Inside to Rogers. He traveled. Coming back into the game for Duke will be Jay Billis, who has the three personal fouls which he picked up in the first two and a half minutes of this half. Bills has had quite a breather. He's been over there for about eight minutes. Ahar will go to the bench. Anderson comes in for Duke. Todd Anderson is a 6'9 junior. And also for the Washington Huskies, Clay Damon, the 6'3 freshman from Spokane, number 12, back in the lineup. Washington pulled that press back in. They didn't uh, go out and challenge Duke this time. Duke needing two to tie. Henderson puts it up. See who this one's off. Looks like Anderson got it. It's a way to get your name in the record book. Come off the bench and go up and grab somebody. Else back. Somebody. They can't miss you in the box score, then, can they? Todd Anderson picks up the foul. The thing about this Duke team, as you look at the free throw percentage, Washington has come on a lot stronger here in the second half. The Duke lineup. Four of their players started all 33 of their games, and Billis is the only one who missed a portion of one game with an injury. That helps. It was a strange shot by 48. It looks like he was leaning into the basket. He was almost ready to fall over the line by the time the ball got there. He shoots such a high arch and free throw that it takes a long time for it to get there. Dave Kaler back into the game for Marv Harshman's Huskies. 48 trying to give him a four-point lead with 11 minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Washington, one of two teams west of the Rockies, left in the NCAA tournament, the other UNLV, which has to play Georgetown next Friday night. Frontline scoring the big edge to the Huskies in this half. 
like we talked about. We said the bigness, the size of Washington could be a big factor. Dawkins rings the bell from the point of view. We also said the factor of quickness in the guards for Duke could be very important, and right now Dawkins showing that. 19 for Dawkins. Shrimp. He never gets a rest. They can't afford it. 48 inside. Counted. It's good. Nice move to the inside by Fortier. And a chance at the three-point play. Fortier right here with a move. I think Billis committed the foul. Look at this move right here. Good, strong position inside. Billis came down and looked like on the arm of Fortier. That is four fouls on Billis. Anderson comes out. Allery comes back in. Allery may have been asked. He may have asked uh, Shishetsky to let him come out and take a breather to play his last 11 minutes. I think he was getting a little tired. Fortier with nine. And the Huskies have a five-point lead as if they seesaw back and forth. Seems like one team makes a run, then the other makes a run. Henderson, who can shoot the eyes out of the basket. David Henderson has ten double figures again. He needs to pitch a ten over there and camp out. He's found him a spot. Dawkins went for the steal. Knocked the ball out of bounds. Washington is seven out of seven from the free throw line here in the second half. Vaughn is coming back in. Duke has only shot four free throws. They've hit two. It's almost the, a reversal of what the first exactly. half was like. Switched around. 58-55 Huskies. They've got the ball with 10 minutes, 45 seconds. Shrimp. And again, the pressure by Duke. Shrimp picked it up. Went back door. Got the layup. That's three he's got. 23 for Detlef Shrimp, which matches what he scored Friday night against Nevada Reno. It'll be Duke's ball out of bounds. Last touch by the Huskies. This is only Washington's sixth appearance in the NCAA tournament. Its last was 1976. Allery going up for the shot. Is fouled. Well, somebody really threaded a great pass to Allery right there, and I think it was Dawkins on the outside. He made his move down the middle and went right around Shrimp, and Shrimp reached out and grabbed him. That's three fouls on Shrimp. And Allery, who is from Scottsdale, Arizona, on the line, class youngster. Has overcome some tragedy in his family. An outstanding basketball player. He's two out of three from the line now. Somebody's put a lid on that uh, basket when Duke's at the free throw line. They're not shooting well at all in the second half. Duke is three out of six from the line. Washington has hit its last five shots. 60 to 56. That's field goal attempts, not free throws. Shrimp. He gets such good position, doesn't he? He really does. You know, he, and he fought in there with Phyllis. Phyllis really had no chance. Once the ball went to the corner, he slid in front of him. Got the position and went straight up at him. That's Billis. He's gone. Jay Billis has just picked up his fifth personal foul. 6 eight sophomore from Rolling Hills, California. Heads to the bench. And Mahar is back in there. Shrimp has 23 points. Three assists and one rebound, and he's three out of six from the free-throw line. That's the only area he's had a problem today. And showing everyone why he was a unanimous Pac-10 All-Conference selection and runner-up to A.C. Green of Oregon State for Pac-10 Player of the Year. And keep in mind, he is only a junior. it is that makes one team shoot so well in the first half and free throws and then turn around and not be able to do it in the second half. You could make a lot of money if you, if you knew the secret to that. Shrepp made his first free throw, then missed three in a row. And now he has hit four in a row. Bellis, who has fouled out. Huskies with a six-point lead. Their biggest in the game has been eight. Washington really spreading out the Duke offense. They're going wing to wing, and they're a good 22 to 25 feet out. Henderson going to Mahar in the corner. Amaker blocked. Running into him. 
is number 12, Clay Damon. And Amaker will be going to the free throw line. Damon, his second. Seems like we've had an awful lot of fouls in the second half, much more so than we had in the first half. A lot of, in fact, both clubs going to the line a lot. Well, the first half, it was mainly Duke going to the line, so Washington was doing most of the fouling. Two for Amaker, who has two points and six assists in this game. He's the quarterback of this team, just a freshman. Duke used to play in a lot of close basketball games. They've been in four overtime games this year, and 14 of their last 16 have been decided by five points or less. You know, it's rare that a coach will take a freshman and make him a point guard on an NCAA team. But he really has, Coach Krzyzewski, a lot of faith in this young freshman. Especially when you've got a guy like Dawkins, who was great last year as a freshman. Timeout, 9.55 left in the game. Coming up Thursday night on CBS, the road to Seattle continues with the East Regional semifinal. Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers against Dean Smith's North Carolina Tar Heels from the Omni in Atlanta, 11.30 Eastern and Pacific. And on Friday night, Wake Forest and DePaul. Ray Meyer's team got by one hurdle today in Illinois State. Next up for them, Wake Forest of the ACC. And that's an eventual possible DePaul-Houston matchup they're looking for uh, maybe a week from today if DePaul and Houston both win their semifinal games. Washington is nine out of nine from the free throw line of the second half. Duke five out of eight. And the Huskies have shot lights out 69% in the second half of play to Duke's 45%. So there's a big difference for you. Four point game right now. Huskies lead. They have the ball. Shrimp. He's been outstanding. Who's going back to that man to man pressure? They're trying to force the Huskies to do a little bit more offensively. 48, guarded closely by Allery. Damon has Dawkins on him. Ron coupled with Amaker. A little bit of a delay game out here. They're trying to run the basketball around. There it is. 48 got it. 48 banged it off the window. And Dan Mahar shot the official at dirty look. Thought that he had been charged. Mahar probably leads the world in charges. Henderson. 48 with another rebound. Huskies are up by six. They control the ball with eight minutes and 55 seconds. And their fans are raising the roof here at Creel Court in Coleman, Washington. Their fans are beginning to smell a little blood. They think they may have a shot here. Vaughn on the drive up the lane. Got it. Alvin Vaughn. Eight point lead. That matches the Huskies' biggest so far in this game. That was back in the first half. Inside to Allery, Vaughn steals it. Allery down on the floor trying to save it. Henderson comes up with it. Dawkins. Dawkins was fouled. 48 says, I didn't do it. 48 was rotating his hand saying, I think he traveled. Bob Harsman, I think, agrees with 48. That is four fouls on 48. Watch it again. Dawkins with the basketball, right baseline. Catches it. I think that was a good move. He caught the ball, came down with both feet, went right around. Look at 48 rotating his arms. Doug McNeely has come into the game for the Blue Devils. Kuszewski uses basically a seven-man rotation. He's down to six and fill us out of there. That's right. Dawkins on the line. Six out of eight from the free throw line for Johnny Dawkins. The good man on the left, Phyllis, is out of the game for the rest of the evening. He's got Allery sitting over there right now taking a breather. That gives Dawkins an even 20 points. Happens to be one above his average, so he's played his basketball game today. Eight out of ten from the free throw line. Shrimp with a double pump action. It is good. And he's fouled by Henderson. The Dawkins has played his game. So has this young man. Death of Shrimp. Watch this play. Right there. Got it away. 
I don't know if Henderson got him. He looked like he floated by. Henderson looked on in disbelief at that foul was called for Schrempf, his 11th basket and 27th point of the game. Henderson will get a rest. It's a great afternoon's work for Dedlis Shrimp. He's had 16-point average all year long, and he's got 27 points right now. Henderson goes to the bench with four fouls on him. Keep stretching it out. They're out by nine now. 28 for Shrimp. Under eight minutes. Left to play. Huskies would go against Dayton Friday night in Los Angeles if they win it. Amaker with the miss. McNeely saves it for Duke. Three players down on the floor. Dawkins for Duke. Clay Damon. Jump ball, possession goes to Washington. So everything going right for the Huskies right now, and Duke is going to have to exercise some pressure. And that's what they're going to do. Pick up full court. Vaughn with a handle right there. Amateur. They're going to get a block. Foul on Amateur. That's his first. Watch these two little guys go after each other. Vaughn with a good position, trying to get around him. Amaker kept backing up and backing up. Vaughn ran into him, but they're going to go the other way, and Amaker gets the foul and Vaughn to the line. Four points, 11 assists for Alvin Vaughn, who's played an outstanding game for the Huskies. He's been a real ball hawk for him. Isn't it amazing? It was Duke free throws that gave him the lead in the first half, and now it's the Washington free throws that have put the Huskies out in front. There's the scoring in the second half. Washington with an 18-point bulge just in the second half. And Washington trailed by eight at halftime. One out of two for Vaughn. Ten-point lead for the Huskies at 70 to 60. Washington with a two-three zone. They're really active with it up front. David and Vaughn really moving. Allery. Foul by Rogers. Three on Rogers of the Huskies. Allery's been kind of quiet in the second half. Has indeed had 10 in the first half. And has scored just one point. She started off slow in the first half and then picked it up. Mark Allery, the 6'8 sophomore from Scottsdale. Allery was a first team All Atlantic Coast Conference player. Leads his team in block shot at 38. Full court pressure by the Blue Devils, who are down by eight with just over seven minutes remaining. That's the kind of pressure Duke's going to have to put on. Looks like a foul by Mahar right there, just as Rogers made his break. Second on Mahar. Washington's a smart basketball team. They looked up and saw that Duke was coming back with that man pressure. And when they came with it, immediately Washington recognized it. They've had a couple of backdoor cuts by Shrimp, who's been able to go in. Right now, I would expect Washington to maybe pull it out a little bit and run a little bit of clock and get a little more patient with it. Reggie Rogers, who's done a fine job filling in for the big man, Christian Belt, the seven-footer, who is in foul trouble. And he was in there when the Huskies made the spurt to gain what was a 10-point lead, is now an eight-point lead. Good move by Amaker, going to the left, and got a good jump shot in. Closes Duke to within six. first basket of the afternoon 70 to 64 that's a good switch right there made by Duke but that far out that hurt you when you switch men that far out it's when you get inside that the switch bothers you it'll hurt you because you get the mismatch Amaker guarding Vaughn Shrimp brings it out to near center court Washington has 10 more field goals in this game than Duke as we suspect right now the Huskies are going to bring the basketball out and try to run some clock just over six minutes to go. Washington with a six-point advantage. 
takes a pretty long time to have to run some clock. Good back door. Rogers stuffs it and is fouled by Allery. His point. It's amazing the job this kid has done. And look at Harshman. He likes it. That was Alvin Vaughn who got him the basketball inside. That was a long feed, long pass. Seven points and three rebounds for Rogers coming off the bench, replacing Christian Belt at center, who is on the bind with four fouls. And at this point, the Huskies haven't missed him. Amaker, yes. Who doesn't quit, they keep coming at you. Amaker with two straight jump shots from right around the top of the key. Seven point lead for Washington at the five and a half minute mark. Damon looking for help outside, goes cross court to Trim. Good idea to have Clay Damon, a freshman in there who played so well the other night, handling the basketball and Vaughn on the other side with it. And Shrimp who handles it so well out front. Washington trying to run some time off the clock. Duke looking for the steal here. Five minutes and ten seconds left to play in the game. Allery is all over Shrimp. He's got four fouls on him. Phyllis already on the bench with five fouls. Dawkins with a foul. Four on him. Harshman says stay after it. So what we do is we get involved in a free throw shooting contest. It's been a little bit of that all afternoon, but it becomes more crucial right now because Washington will have to walk to the line and make these free throws if they're going to continue to hold the basketball. There have been 49 free throws shot in this game so far. Duke is 24 of 30. Washington is 14 of 19. Vaughn. One out of two from the line, five points, and 11 assists. Big miss. He's missed his last two. Look at Dawkins get down the court. Picks up the foul and will go to the line. Tough to stop Dawkins when he gets the basketball, and he's motoring up the court like that. Clay Damon tried to catch up with him, but it was, it was no good because Dawkins really pushes it right straight at the rim. Damon gets the foul. Here comes the big guy, Bell, back into the lineup. The seven-foot freshman from West Germany. And Rogers gets a big hand. Well-deserved. He had a good second half. He really shot this club ahead, and they got he's the reason they've got this lead right now. Dawkins on the line. 21 points, 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Great eye for the basket. Good rotation on the ball. Flexes his knees and gets it through. Timeout. 4.54 left to play. It's the Huskies by six. With a stock engine. Frank Lieber with Larry Conley reminding you. Eastern Regional Semifinal Action on CBS Thursday night. Matching... The Indiana Hoosiers and the North Carolina Tar Heels. There you've got our last Olympic coach and our next Olympic coach battling each other. Dean Smith and Bobby Knight. And on Friday night from St. Louis, Wake Forest and DePaul. As Ray Meyer tries to get that team to the Final Four. Speaking of the Final Four, the last time Washington won a championship in the Pac-10 was 1953. That was 31 years ago. Tippy Dye was the head coach. And they wound up getting to the final four and finished third. Of course, in the last 20 years, the championship has been owned by either UCLA or Oregon State. And for the most part, it's been UCLA, although Ralph Miller of recent years has done extremely well. Four and a half minutes left. Washington playing a little keep away here with a six-point advantage. If they're going to play keep away, they're going to have to make their free throws. I think we had a five-second call right there. On the freshman, Clay Damon. So a turnover caused by the Duke Blue Devils. This is the way the turnovers have gone in the second half. Duke has turned it over seven times. And Washington just four. The Duke with the big advantage. Duke with a chance to trim it to four. Good feed by Mahard Allery. And the 
foul. Allery gets the basket. His fifth. The foul is on Shrimp, and that is four on the Husky star. Very difficult to make a short pass like this. Mahar did, and he got it around Shrimp. Shrimp got Allery right on the back of the head just as he stuffed it. This will trim it to three, 73 to 70 if he makes it. Three-point game with the... Duke Blue Devils trailing Washington after leading at halftime by eight and looking like they had control of the game. And again, it's the six, nine and a half shrimp who brings the basketball up. And Washington front line is outscored. Duke 33 to 12 as the Huskies throw it away. And now it'll be the Blue Devils with a big trip down the floor that could bring it to one. Your time remaining four minutes one second here in Pullman Washington a lot of Duke fans here as you can tell in the background but they are far outnumbered by those from Washington who have made the trip cross state from Seattle Amaker the seven footer belt with the rebound down quickly to Damon I wonder if Washington will begin to play again maybe they went to that stall a little too early Foul is on Amaker. That's two on Tommy Amaker, the Duke freshman point guard. And again, Washington will have to walk to the free throw line and make these free throws. I think Duke's going to continue to foul them until they see that Washington is not going to make them. If they continue to miss, they're going to be there. Some fan behind the Duke bench, you know, they're very polite. They put up a, a poster there saying, but sirs, we beg to differ aimed at the officials. Big free throw by Paul Fortier. He's now four out of four. Has 12 points. This should again give the Huskies a five-point advantage. With 3.35 left. Basket will count, and a foul call underneath on Fortier. This could be a four-point play. It was Mahar who took the tumble. Fortier might have gotten him with an elbow. Fortier has fouled out. Look at Fortier in your front right there. He just pushed Mahar completely out of the way. Henderson got the basket. Look at the official with the call right there. So Henderson with a key basket. He has 12 points. Mahar will go to the line for a one and one opportunity, and you're looking at a possible four-point play. Well, got an official timeout here. The scoreboard has just gone to search. That's to begin with. We'll get okay, it straightened out here in a second. Krzyzewski right. comes over for a look. They're looking at the scoreboard. They want to make sure they got it right here. Yeah, that's right. They put up the two points. It was 75 to 70, and they just put the two down. So it is now 75-72, and if Mahar hits both ends here, it's a one-point game with 3.23 left. It's really been a game of spurts. One club will get ahead, then the other one comes back, and then we've, we've done vice versa all day long. Exactly. It hasn't been a case of matching baskets. Not at all. A big miss for Mahar. He missed his two free throw attempts in this game. Damon looking underneath to Rogers, who was alone, but he didn't give him the ball. Swamp is fouled by Mahar. That's three on him. Shrimp is six out of nine from the free throw line. Allery is in. Mahar is out. Time left, three minutes and ten seconds. And the cool West German. Detlef Shrimp on the free throw line for the Washington Huskies. He has 28 points in this game. You know, we talked earlier about Roger, the fact that he's out of the basketball game right now. What a great second half he had to really spur them on. This young man has had a great afternoon, both first half and second half. As you can see, way above his average point-wise, and they've needed him. That gives him an even 30. Defense! Defense! 
including eight out of 11 from the line. Five-point lead for the Huskies as we hit the three-minute mark. Henderson with the jumper. Banks it off the window for two. Well, that was in the face of Detlef Shrimp. He was right there with his arms up, and Henderson shot him right over the top of his head. And keep in mind that Shrimp has four fouls on him. Delph also with four fouls on him, operating offensively. Goes oh, well, Credit the assist to Vaughn. And the basket to Rocky, who's plenty of plays we've seen all day. A little touch pass. Hit his hands and boom, went right away. Five-point lead for Washington. Amager short with the J. Rebound, Shrimp. Shrimp operating on both ends now. Huskies with a five-point lead. And you see the time remaining, just over two minutes. Allen leaning on Belt. Vaughn guarded by Dawkins. Amaker out on Damon. It's not the customary position for Belt to be away handling the basketball. Vaughn, not a good shot. Not at all. Now Duke's got it. They can cut it. And at the three, if Amaker can get it in there. Good feed to Allery. Allery with the jam. Seems like Washington just can't put Duke away. They keep coming back at him. Three-point lead with a minute 40. Vaughn, I'm sure, regretted taking that shot. It was certainly not a high-percentage shot. Let's go back and watch the Duke basket again. Amateur with the basketball. You'll see Allery coming to your screen right there. There's the feed. He just simply goes up and puts it through. Anderson is fouled out. That's five on him. So the second Duke player goes to the bench. Johnny Billis, who fouled out earlier. And that will send Mahar back to action with a minute 29 to go. Timeout called by the Blue Devils. They trail it by three. Well, an exciting afternoon of action, certainly, here at Pullman Court. SMU almost upsetting Georgetown. Kevin O'Malley, the executive producer of NCAA Sports. These are the people responsible. Our producer, Michael Burks. Our director, Sandy Grossman. Our associate producer, Kathy Barreto. Brooks Graham, Tim Abel, Scott Johnson, our broadcast associate. And the rest of the folks out here in the Pacific Northwest who have done an outstanding job providing the pictures and the audio for you. But an exciting weekend starting with the Friday night game with SMU and Miami of Ohio and the SMU Georgetown game and this one also looks like it's going right down to the wire. And as teams drop out of the wayside we've got others who are continuing on. As you look at the regionals right now in the Mideast Kentucky will play Louisville. That's a big ball game. Maryland, Illinois is another good basketball game. In the West, obviously, Georgetown, UNLV, and the Dayton will play the winner of this game. In the East, North Carolina and Indiana, that's a good game seen on CBS this week. Syracuse against Virginia in the other matchup. In the Midwest, DePaul against Wake Forest. And a good Memphis State and Houston game. Kind of a rematch. And the winner of this one going up against Dayton next Friday night in Los Angeles at Pauley Pavilion. The other half of the doubleheader will be Georgetown and UNLV. Devlin Shrimp has scored 30. His career high is 34, which he set against USC. There he is, and where would the Huskies be without him? At home watching. <laughs> Second half, Washington is at 17 out of 19 from the line. And Shrimp has missed three of his 11 attempts so far. There's the free throw picture, and it's been a big factor in both halves, with Duke having the big advantage in the first half. Missed that one. Chance to cut it to one. Big, big miss for Detlef Shrimp. Hussey's going to stay back in that 2 3 zone and make Duke beat them from the outside. There's the man with the basketball. One of them can do it. Amateurs, another one. So can Dawkins. Duke has been in so many tight games this year. Four overtime games. Allery knocks it down from outside. Duel is a cucumber, and Duke calls a timeout. They trail by one with a minute three left here in Pullman. Can't get 
much tighter than this. Washington with a one-point advantage over Duke. A minute three left. There's your timeout situation. The Huskies have two left, and the Blue Devils have one as we return to play here at Friel Court in Pullman, Washington. The night of exciting basketball. Washington is at 61% and Duke 58% from the field. So both teams shoot them pretty well. Pretty good afternoon's work for both clubs. Duke's going to put good pressure now on the basketball. They're going to try to get some sort of steal. They need it away from the Huskies. Trample inbounded. He does it all to Velp. I think Mahara was trying to foul Velp right there. He just didn't get there in time. Well, he would be the guy, obviously, to foul. And again, good pressure. You see Amaker right there on the on Vaughn on the outside. Now Allery comes out on Shrimp. Shrimp's very familiar in that turf out there. Allery is not. He doesn't play out there very often. Shrimp, 75% free throw shooter. If they should foul him, Vaughn actually is only one a 61% free throw shooter. That's Vaughn with the ball, and Belt. The officials didn't see it. Steal. They didn't need the foul. Now, here is Duke with a chance to win it. They have one timeout left, and they will use it right now with 15 seconds to go. And the fans booing because they thought that Mahar fouled Belt. Indeed, it, it looked like he was trying to foul him because he is not the greatest free throw shooter at 63%, but the officials missed it. And while all that was happening, Duke stole the ball. Watch Mahara come out after Velp right here. He's trying to reach around and grab the ball. He's got his left arm on his hip right there. Tried to pull him away. No foul called. Washington's going to keep the basketball. Then Shrimp went down the middle. He's got the ball right now. Watch him turn and make a move down the middle. See if he gets fouled right here. This is what Marv Harshman was upset about. A lot of hands in there. A lot of hands. But no call. And Duke will wind up with the basketball. All right, Mr. Conley, how's your strategy here? Do you go for the win? You go for the win. You got no other choice. Let's go back and look at another angle on this. Look at Mahara right there. He's got a hold of Belp with his left arm, reaching with his right arm. Now look at the move down the middle. Let's see if there are any fouls right here. It's hard to see. McNeely got in the way of the camera there. We couldn't see from, the, from upstairs. We were too far away to be able to tell if it was a foul. The official didn't think so, and Duke's going to get the ball. The big question now is, whose hands do you put the basketball in for that final shot? Obviously, Amaker's had a pretty good outside shooting half. you got to think Dawkins and Allery. Those are the three guys I would look for. Now, if you're Washington, do you think about fouling somebody? Making them win it at the free throw line, perhaps? Well, that's possible, except uh, when you look down through there, Amaker's an 83% shooter. Dawkins is an 83% shooter. Allery's a 75% free throw shooter. Well, it has come down to this so many times for the Duke Blue Devils this season. The Georgia Tech game in the ACC tournament. Trip to Los Angeles here in the final 15 seconds. It's all going to come down to it. Amaker. Watch the time closely. Duke with a basket to win here. Shot is short. Rogers with the rebound, and he is fouled. Rogers coming up with the biggest rebound of the game. The clock rolled down to one second. I think they're going to have to put some time back on the clock. There was 15 seconds to go when they got the inbound pass. What they've got to do now is estimate what amount of time went off the clock. That's what they're trying to determine. The timer and the officials will get together to try to set or establish how much time is left on the clock. Maybe they'll come over and talk to you. They've done that once this week, haven't they? What? Watch Amaker right there. There's the release of the ball right there. There it's grabbed. Here's the foul right there. Nine seconds left on the clock. There's the official raising his hand. Remember that it's eight seconds. You cannot stop the clock until the official raises his arm. When he raises his arm, the timer then stops the clock. Now they'll have to run it down to the seven second mark. Obviously, the Duke bench watching this closely. I'm not going to argue about one second. We got I 
remember one year, going back to the Southwest Conference, that uh, Houston thought it got a bad deal out of Texas Tech and voted the Texas Tech clock keeper to its all-opponent team. Six seconds to go, period. Now you heard the timekeeper say six seconds to go, period. So they're going to run it down to six, apparently. Well, look at see if you can tell when the official raises his hand in the air. He's going to set it at six. Watch the underneath official, underneath the baseline. As soon as he raises his hand, the clock will stop. It's now. It's on eight seconds when he raises his hand. Now we're going to have to wait a little bit longer, apparently, because that clock is recycled back to the minute mark, and they're running it back down again. Krzyzewski calling his team back over to him. It's something that's kind of tough, too, for Reggie Rogers to be standing off on the sideline. He's going to be walking up there to shoot free throws, and he's already been standing over there for two and a half or three minutes. He could have cooled off a little bit. So Rogers, who has had an excellent game coming off the bench, can cement it here. He's come up with eight big points for the Washington Huskies, in addition to some very important rebounds. And that may have been the biggest one yet. We shall see. They're running it down to six. So that's where it'll be. Rogers will go to the line. Well, they got, look at that season. Yeah, they got the right guy. I need a white. I need a white. Be interesting to see what Duke does if he misses. If they push it up the floor or take a timeout. Well, according to what we have here, they don't have a timeout left. Right, they've got to go with it. Oh, that's a big one. This one will lock it away if he makes it. This one could send the Huskies to Los Angeles. Duke's alive. They've got a shot at tying it here. Trip for the steal. And he is fouled. Wait a minute. They're ruling now that Trip, I believe, stepped out of bounds. Let's see. He did. He stepped on the line. Duke's going to get one more chance. They've got one second to get a shot off. Oh, Washington's going to take a timeout. That'll give Duke a chance to set up a play. Unusual. How many plays can you run in one second, though? I'll tell you what, I don't know if I'd have taken that time out right there. Let's watch it once more. Look at me. Look at the pass right there is stolen by Shrimp. It was going to go to Allery. You see Shrimp go right along the sideline. He was walking the tight rope, stepped out of bounds, and Duke will have the ball with just one second left. And they've got it in their end of the court. Now, look at it again here, and keep in mind, with one second left, what can you do? Throw in the try alley oop? You've got to do something with it. Once you get the basketball in, you've got to turn and get the shot up immediately. I would look for a baseline screen and try to get somebody free down there. Taking a 35 or 40 foot shot really doesn't do much for you, but the good shot usually comes from the baseline. It's just a matter of if they can spring somebody loose down there. You'd almost have to get the shot off in the same motion, would just you, as, as you catch the it, ball? Well, it depends on the click of the clock. You know, you, you look at that, you may have uh, one and nine-tenth seconds, or you may just have one and one-tenth seconds. Let's take a look at when Shrimp goes out of bounds. It looks like there's more than one second left. Take a look here. Shrimp over to the sideline. Now, there he's out of bounds, and the clock shows three seconds. But they're only putting one on the board. But again, a reminder, you've got to look at that official, the referee who raises his hand and stops the clock. You cannot count on the timer to look at that man out of bounds. He looks at the official. Mahar will inbound. One second to go. They've got Allery under the basket. Dawkins tried to go up. That's it. They tried to go for the alley-oop, but it's all over. Washington has won it. 80 to 78, and the Huskies will go on to Los Angeles to meet Dayton.
in regional action next Thursday. A valiant try by the young Blue Devils from the Atlantic Coast Conference. They're the only ACC team. That's it, 80 to 78. Frank Lieber along with Larry Conley in Pullman, Washington. Now, let's go to Brett Musburger in New York. I think that Duke is owed four seconds, but nevertheless, they still lost that game to Washington, and the Chevrolet most valuable players are Detlef Shrimp of Washington and Johnny Dawkins of Duke. Reminders, Thursday night at 11.30, Indiana against North Carolina. Then on Friday night, 11.30 on CBS, it'll be Wake Forest against DePaul. I'm Brent Musburger. We certainly hope you've enjoyed the road to the Final Four here on CBS. So long, everybody.